So Cal Ivanko, the former chief operating officer of Canvas Beauty, uh, looks like he has moved forward and filed his lawsuit against Stormy Steele, who is the founder of the company. Now, the lawsuit alleges wrongful termination and other grievances related to his departure from the business. So let's get straight into it because it is 13 pages long and I will not be reading every single word verbatim. Um, So we'll kind of summarize certain sections, Uh, but looks like it was filed August 14th um, in Alabama. But the plaintiff is Kyle Ivanko and Ivanko Consulting Group LLC versus Stormy Steel, Canvas Beauty Brands LLC, CNVS Holdings LLC and CNVS Fulfillment LLC. So the complaint, the plaintiff is Mr. Cal Ivanko and Ivanko Consulting Group. He alleges the following claims against the defendant Stormy Steele. So the parties involved, it says one plaintiff, Mr. Ivanko is an adult resident citizen of the state of California. Um, And then it says plaintiff ECG, which stands for Ivanko Consulting Group is a limited liability company organized under the laws of California with a principal place of business in Los Angeles County, California. ECG is a citizen of California. It then goes on to address Stormy Steele um, as a party. She is an adult resident citizen of the state of Alabama. Um, Then it says defendant CBB, which is, of course, Canvas Beauty Brands, is a limited liability company organized under the laws of Alabama. Um, It also says defendant Canvas Fulfillment is a limited liability company organized under the laws of Alabama. And then defendant Canvas Holdings is also a limited liability company organized under the laws of Alabama. Um, And let's just back up. It did state that a jury trial was demanded. Um, So the next section is the jurisdiction and venue. This court has personal jurisdiction over defendants because defendants are all citizens of Alabama. Now, I won't read all the rest of that because it just basically confirms that the venue of where this is going to be held is the proper place because of where the business is located. But let's get into the factual background. It says the parties agree to equity and profit sharing. CBB, which of course is Canvas Beauty Brand, is a for-profit business based in Alabama that specializes in selling the product Body Glaze for retail purchase by consumers nationwide. It says Mrs. Steele founded CBB in 2017 and alleges with her husband, Courtney Beasley, to be the sole owners of each of the Canvas defendants. And then it says Mrs. Steele serves as the chief executive officer of CBB. Now, here's where Cal comes into play. Um, It says in January of 2023, Mrs. Steele hired Mr. Ivanko on a freelance basis to perform limited scope marketing services for CBB starting February 1st, 2023. It says at the time of initial contact from, and I'll just say Stormy, um, it says Cal provided marketing services through the marketing agency that he co-founded, Cracker Jack LLC. In early 2023, when Cal initially began providing marketing services for his Canvas Beauty brand, It was on the verge of insolvency. Uh, It says Canvas Beauty brand had existing liabilities exceeding two million dollars and had hundreds of orders that had not been fulfilled. Um, It said it it says it was clear to Cal that Canvas Beauty was on the verge on insolvency and needed even greater attention beyond marketing from an experienced professional. It says that basically Stormy was so impressed with Cal's work that she engaged him to serve a greater role within Canvas Beauty. Uh, Beginning in March of 2023, it says uh, that Cal began to lead Canvas Beauty brands, marketing, customer support and graphic design, among other operational responsibilities. On April 11th of 2023, 
It says Mr. Ivanko approached Mrs. Steele about working with her on a full time and undivided basis. Mr. Ivanko was unquestionably clear. He would abandon the company he co-founded, Cracker Jack LLC, and work for Mrs. Steele and CBB, which is Canvas Beauty Brand, in exchange for equity and profit sharing. And this is where Stormy went wrong. Um, and it looks like he sent this to her through a text message. Um, so it says Mr. Ivanko sent Mrs. Steele a text message on April 11th, 2023, that reads as follows. My ask for you, start thinking about what kind of equity split you'd be comfortable with if I step into a brand manager, CMO plus COO type role and help truly execute on 2.0. We can do a dedicated call about it when you're ready. I'm not going to strong arm you into anything. It's not how I work. Uh, let's just keep going. It says on April 12, 2023, um, Stormy offered Cal 30% equity in Canvas Beauty brand if they could turn things around. Further explaining, she would rather have 70% of something big than 100% of nothing. Uh, it says Kyle accepted Stormy's offer and began his detrimental reliance on her unequivocal promise. By text message dated April 12, 2023, it says Kyle's reliance was as clear as day. I got my eyes on the prize. That's why I'm ready to flip my entire career upside down to work on canvas and these things with you. True to his word, Mr. Ivanko provided consideration bargained for by Mrs. Steele when he stepped away from the company he co-founded and began to devote substantially all of his time to canvas beauty brand. Acknowledging Mr. Ivanko's acceptance of her offer, Mrs. Steele messaged back with, when we get this foundation solid and start executing, it's going to be a windfall. Uh, it says on numerous occasions throughout the remainder of 2023 uh, that Stormy confirmed through text messages that basically Cal was a 30 percent owner of Canvas Beauty brand or at the absolute minimum entitled to 30 percent of Canvas Beauty brands profits. Um, it says as an owner of CBB, which is Canvas Beauty brand, it says Cal did whatever it took to keep the business afloat, which included loaning the business approximately $40,000 and foregoing his $10,000 monthly payments from CBB for his services. Um, in this next section, it says Mr. Ivanko turns canvas beauty brands around and Mrs. Steele shows the first signs of greed. So now this next section says that basically Cal was the linchpin in bringing Canvas Beauty brands to national prominence by leveraging his pre-existing experience with TikTok to successfully promote Canvas Beauty and by drastically improving net operating margins. It says none of these successes would have occurred without Mr. Ivanko's substantial involvement. Um, it goes on to say that basically Cal delivered on his promise of turning things around that Mrs. Steele mentioned as the only possible contingency to his 30% equity stake in CBB. Um, it says by the end of December, 2023, Canvas Beauty brand had over $3 million in profits as a result of Cal and Stormy's dedication to their company. It goes on to say that Mrs. Steele and Mr. Ivanko as co-owners of Canvas Beauty declared a profit distribution of a million dollars from CBB, which is Canvas Beauty, $700,000 for Stormy and $300,000 for Cal. The exact 70-30 equity split that Stormy and Cal agreed on previously 
And Stormy repeatedly affirmed with Kyle. It says the remainder of the profits were to be reinvested into the company for even greater growth. Um, it goes on to say that with Cal bringing Canvas Beauty to new heights of profitability, Stormy continued living a lifestyle of excess and extravagance. Over the next few months, Stormy began to show signs that she was feeling uncomfortable about Cal's interest in Canvas Beauty. On April 18, 2024, Stormy sent a text message to Cal stating, I have anxiety about ownership in the immediate, but not profit sharing in perpetuity or in the event of a huge sale. It says emphasis added upon information and belief. It says that Stormy had not told her husband, Courtney Beasley, about the equity and profit sharing arrangement with plaintiffs as of April 18th, 2024. Um, and a lot of people feel like this is where Stormy went wrong and she got nervous um, that she didn't let her husband know that this man was now part owner and receiving profits and had equity in uh, the business now. Um, so the next section says that the communication could not have been clearer between parties as evidence by a text message from Mrs. Steele to Mr. Ivanko on May 2nd, where Mrs. Steele reconfirms her position on the agreement 70 30 profit share and in the event of a major sale 30% of the sale goes to you Mr. Ivanko um, it goes on to say based on the continued false promises and guarantees by Mrs. Steele uh, it says Cal continued to provide exceptional value to Canvas Beauty, including work managing customer service, graphic and label designs, marketing, inventory and supply chain management, human resources, payroll, finances, product development, business development and vendor relations. Meanwhile, it says that Stormy began to plot how to extract the maximum value out of Cal before kicking him to the curb. Um, it says on June 8th, 2024, Canvas Beauty held a history-making, record-breaking live stream at TikTok, selling over a million dollars of products in a single live stream. With eight figures of profit in the bank, Cal and Stormy once again declared a profit distribution on July 3rd, 2024, the distribution was made as follows, $5,166,169.74 would go to Stormy and $2,471,621.71 would go to Cal through his ownership entity ECG. It says the profit distribution percentages reflected the exact 70-30 profit split that the parties agreed to, continually abided by, and that Stormy herself reaffirmed numerous times in writing. Stormy's distribution was technically only 68% because her distribution was adjusted to pay back Canvas Beauty brand for amounts that she used for her personal expenditures from the company's account. Upon information and belief, Stormy habitually misappropriated company funds for her personal uses. Um, it goes on to say that Kyle and Stormy agreed to retain approximately $5 million of profits in the Canvas Beauty bank accounts rather than take a large distribution on July 3rd, 2024. Um, it says by text message dated July 7th, 2024, um, it says that Stormy messaged Cal, you know, this time next year, your net worth going to be over $10 million, even if we didn't sell. Emphasis added, it says. Um, only a few days later, on July 11th, 2024, Canvas Beauty held another live stream event selling $1.1 million worth of Canvas Beauty products in a single day. 
Like the June live stream, this success occurred with Cal serving as executive producer of the live stream. Canvas Beauty had reached yet a new level of profitability that could not have been imagined prior to Cal joining. It says, alas, Mrs. Steele wanted it all for herself. Um, It goes on to say, to date, the plaintiffs have not received an equitable percentage of the profits of the Canvas defendants beyond the July 3rd profit distribution. Now, it goes on to say that basically Cal reasonably relied on Stormy's representations and assurances that both herself and him would temporarily forego the distribution of the retained profits to provide operational padding for Canvas Beauty to their mutual benefit. Without those assurances, Cal would have sought a full distribution of profits of Canvas Beauty. Um, It goes on to say that um, Cal was deceived by Stormy into deferring his equitable share of profits to build the CBB empire. All the while, Stormy was plotting on how to shove Cal out of the company before her husband learned of the profit sharing arrangement. It says that Stormy continually induced Cal's consent to keep reinvesting his profits in Canvas Beauty with promises of mutual wealth building. Um, It says that Stormy knew that Cal would trust her at her word. He sent multiple text messages previously reiterating that fact. Now, it also says that uh, Stormy knew that she could take advantage of Cal's honesty and trust. All right. So this next section states that upon information and belief, Stormy continued to misappropriate company funds for extravagant personal use, including an all expense paid vacation to Miami with bottle service at a nightclub, a boat and even Stormy's personal home expenses. Upon information and belief, Stormy has converted to her own use money rightfully belonging to plaintiffs in the form of company profits and has unjustly enriched herself at the plaintiff's expense. Upon information and belief, it says that Stormy had used and continued to use company funds that in part or in whole are the rightful property of plaintiffs for Mrs. Steele's personal expenses. Uh, It says Mrs. Steele executes her scheme of kicking out Mr. Ivanko. So this is the next section. It says on July 18th, 2024, Mrs. Steele approached Cal about securing a 409A valuation performed on the canvas defendants. The 409A valuation would be a mechanism to determine the enterprise value of the business. Upon information and belief, it says that Stormy either on her own or through discussions with the third party estimated the business to have a value of over a hundred million dollars. Coincidentally, while Stormy had the value of the company on her mind, She initiated an argument with Cal over a trivial matter and requested that he provide an email with his current roles and responsibilities at Canvas Beauty and list all company contacts that he was the point of contact for. It says the next day during a conversation that Cal initiated about his roles and responsibilities moving forward that Stormy shoved Mr. Ivanko out of the company that he helped build and stated, we're done. Talk to my lawyer. We're done. All right. So this next section is titled count one misrepresentation promissory fraud. So this section starts out by saying plaintiffs reallege paragraph numbers 10 through 40 of the complaint inclusive as if fully set forth herein. It says in an effort to induce Mr. Ivanko to abandon the company, he co-founded. Now they done lost me there. Mm, I don't know about co-founded, but it says join Canvas Beauty and remain there 
that basically Stormy continuously and intentionally, willfully, wantonly, recklessly, negligently, and or innocently misrepresented material facts to and suppressed information from Mr. Ivanko. At the time, it says that Stormy made the above misrepresentations and suppressions separately and severally. It says that Stormy intended to deceive Cal and never intended to act in the manner described in her statements. Mrs. Steele made these materially false and misleading statements in her individual capacity and in her representative capacity as chief executive officer of the Canvas defendants with the intention of binding Canvas Beauty brand and later the Canvas defendants to an agreement with Mr. Ivanko in reasonable reliance on Mrs. Steele's statements and representations. It says that Kyle contributed his time and effort to the Canvas defendants for which he has not received the full value of his work nor has he received the full share of his profits. As a direct and proximate cause of defendants' unlawful and fraudulent conduct, plaintiffs have been and will continue to be damaged. Wherefore, plaintiffs pray that this court award judgment in favor of plaintiffs against defendants for compensatory and punitive damages plus interest, attorney fees, plaintiff's costs of suit, and such other relief as this court deems just and equitable. Now, count two is a breach of contract. Um, it says plaintiffs reallege that paragraphs numbers 10 through 43 of the complaint, inclusive as if fully set forth herein. It says that basically Cal entered into a binding contract with Stormy, whereby um, he would be given a 30 percent interest in Canvas Beauty, complete with the right to receive an equitable share in the profits. Defendants through the actions and inactions of Mrs. Steele have breached the agreement with Mr. Ivanko. Additionally, with Mrs. Steele denying plaintiff's ownership in the canvas defendants she has anticipatorily repudiated any such intention to abide by their contractual agreement in the future now, not only did mr ivanko and mrs Steele agree on multiple occasions to the 70 30 profit split defendants jointly though cbb had made multiple distributions on a 70 30 basis to mrs Steele and plaintiffs further cementing the undeniable legal intent of defendants to be legally bound by their previous agreement. Wherefore, plaintiffs pray that this court, A, award judgment in favor of plaintiffs against defendants for compensatory, direct, indirect, and punitive damages, plus interest, attorney fees, plaintiffs' costs of suit, Declare that plaintiffs own a 30% interest in the canvas defendants. Declare that plaintiffs own a 30% profit distribution right in perpetuity from the canvas defendants and award such other relief as this court deems just and equitable. Now, count three, it says unjust enrichment. It says plaintiffs reallege paragraph numbers 10 through 46. Okay. Um, it also goes on to say, as described herein, Mrs. Steele has been unjustly enriched by taking, diverting, misappropriating, and otherwise receiving funds, assets, and other benefits that belonged to the Canvas defendants. It says Mrs. Steele has received the Canvas defendants' funds, assets, and other benefits belonging to plaintiffs through the breach of their agreement that granted plaintiffs 30% of Canvas defendants. It says Mrs. Steele has thereby been unjustly enriched and should immediately disgorge the aforementioned funds, property benefits, and assets that Mrs. Steele has taken or has caused to be taken by third parties at her bequest. 
Specifically, plaintiffs contend that Mrs. Steele is liable to plaintiffs for unjust enrichment from the time period of April 12, 2023 through present and continuing during the pendency of this proceeding. It says that Mr. Ivanko provided his expert services to defendants at a less than market rate and at times without payment altogether under the allure of ownership in the canvas defendants. Therefore, defendants were able to acquire Mr. Ivanko's services at a substantially discounted rate. Defendants have knowingly accepted and retained this benefit that would have otherwise not been available, but for defendants' unlawful actions and omissions. It goes on to say that Cal reasonably expected to be compensated for these discounted and often free services. Wherefore, plaintiffs pray this court award judgment in favor of plaintiffs against defendants for the unjust enrichment and reasonable value of services rendered by plaintiffs. So that was count three. Count four says breach of fiduciary duties. Plaintiffs reallege that paragraphs numbers 10 through 49 of the complaint. Um, then it says that as the COO and owner of the canvas defendants, Basically, Stormy owes duties of care, loyalty, and good faith to the other owners of the Canvas defendants, including Mr. Ivanko. It says that Mrs. Steele's duties include obligations to exercise good business judgment, to act prudently in the operation of the Canvas defendants, to act in the best interests of the Canvas defendants, and to put the interests of the Canvas defendants before her own. It says that Mrs. Steele breached her fiduciary duty of care by, among other things, routinely commingling personal expenditures from CBB's operating account for her own benefit. Now, this last section of the complaint states that Mrs. Steele breached her fiduciary duty of loyalty and good faith by, among other things, making fraudulent statements to Cal as a co-owner of the Canvas defendants and seeking to disenfranchise him from realizing the profits generated from the Canvas defendants. It states that Mrs. Steele further breached her fiduciary duties by discussing confidential owner's financial information to third parties in an effort to harass Mr. Ivanko. And I think many of us know uh, what they are referring to there. Um, But it goes on to say, as a result of Mrs. Steele's fiduciary duty breaches, Mr. Ivanko has been damaged. And prayer for relief, wherefore, plaintiffs respectfully request as follows. A. Award a money judgment against defendants for the amount that has been fraudulently and wrongfully withheld from plaintiffs. B. Award a money judgment against defendants for the unjust enrichment defendants have received as a result of Mrs. Steele's fraudulent statements. Um, It goes on to say, declare that plaintiffs own 30% of the canvas defendants. Declare the plaintiffs own a 30% profit distribution right in perpetuity from the canvas defendants. It says award reasonable attorney fees, costs, and expenses in this action and award such other relief as the court deems just and proper. It goes on to say jury demand in accordance with rule 38 of the federal rules of civil procedure Plaintiffs respectfully demand a jury trial of any and all issues in this action so triable of right. So now to me, it sounds like Stormy really just kind of got excited because of what Kyle was doing and how he was turning the business around. It's almost like she didn't even stop to think like when you give someone 30 percent ownership of your business, that's a lot of money. You may not see it that way, but um, it sounds like she should have sat down 
and spoken to her attorney before she made any type of decision and, you know, talked to her husband, asked a lot of questions and none of that was done. Um, so here we are with a lawsuit. Um, but let's look at who Cal hired to represent him. His name is Addison Watson. He's from Birmingham, Alabama, and he looks really young, uh, but it says that he is a legal advisor, general counsel at Click Funnels and Dealmaker. Um, it says Summit Legal Consulting. His page states, um, he says he's been business minded lawyer who you can trust to shoot you straight. No legal lease here. I say y'all and write informally. He said, don't let the accent fool you. I am damn good at what I do. So uh, I guess we will have to just wait to see how all of this plays out. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below about these complaints. Um, how, what do you think about Stormy not telling Courtney that she had made Cal part business owner and allowing him to reap the benefits of uh, profits and equity? And then also there are questions about whether or not text messages are legally binding. And so from based on research, uh, it says that, yes, that under the Electronic Signatures and Global and National Commerce Act or eSign Act, text can be legally binding if they meet certain requirements. And this does apply in the state of Alabama. Um, it says contract requirements. The text message must meet the requirements of a bilateral contract, such as offer, consideration, capacity and acceptance. This includes having complete and definite terms and both parties intending to be bound by those terms. It says clear agreement. Both parties must be able to clearly indicate their agreement, such as by replying yes or I agree. Actual notice, the text messages may include a link to a full contract document. And then it says public records. Alabama's public record law includes electronic records such as text messages and treats them the same as other forms of electronic communication. So once again, let me know your thoughts about all of this, you guys. Drop down in the comments. I always love to hear what you guys are thinking. And as always, I thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up and be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from what's happening.